in a way, what we've been able to understand about what AI can do and what it can't do helps us to understand what's unique about the human mind. And so one of the problems they're having now with, uh, I mean, ChatGPT is doing all these amazing, amazing things we didn't expect. But when you use the output of ChatGPT to in turn train ChatGPT in the next generation, things go all wonky that the whole system is predicated on information that comes initially from a human mind. And so you get this problem of degeneracy over time with each generation, it gets worse and worse. If you use the output to train the input of the next generation, uh, you, you get re really bad results. And what, it, what does that point to? Well, it, it shows that the whole system is, is uh, predicated or, or dependent on, the, on an input from an actual conscious agent, an actual conscious intelligence. And so as you as you kind of describe the contours or, or define the contours of what of what AI can do, you find that there's that those boundaries help us understand what's unique about the human mind, that there's there's something that we can do that the machine intelligence can't. And it might be very, very in some ways similar with the with the uh, the God hypothesis that there are, mm -hmm. we reach the limits of materialistic uh, uh, science in the sense of the understanding the causal powers of, of matter and energy alone. And then we begin to realize oh, there, there's there, there's another kind of entity in the universe, namely a mind that can do things that matter and energy can't do. And when we see the distinctive hallmarks of agency built into the natural world, we have a strong evidential basis for inferring that agency uh, and indeed a transcendent agency was was responsible for what we see in nature so it's a perhaps a, there's a similarity of reasoning there